Hey guys, uh, just want to give some quick notes on uh, the latest attack in Orlando. I know that this is a uh, uh, still evolving scenario, but I think it's worthy because, as always, the uh, what happens in the real world affects uh, what happens in the classroom. So, um, just some quick quick overview. Uh, I'm taping this on Sunday night, and what we know is that there were 50 people killed in Orlando uh, by a guy, and I, his name, I, I don't remember his name, but his name has been released. His father has talked about someone who is uh, mentally ill, uh, or seemed to be mentally ill, uh, that, that actually conducted this attack with a, uh, an AR-15 and, an, and, a, and a pistol. Uh, that's what we know. There's always a lot of speculation that comes out of these about whether he's supported from the outside. This is an ISIS attack. Um, of course, I, I'd want to wait a couple of days before we get the full facts of the story to make any definitive conclusions. But I think there's some points here that are relevant to uh, to our class. Um, first is um, uh, what we know now is that this person had been in investigated by the FBI and he had been, in fact, interrogated by the FBI on three separate occasions. Um, this is a continuing theme, and, you know, it's a theme for this past week, unfortunately, of, okay, we know this person is on a, is either being investigated by the FBI or he's on a watch list. The Boston Marathon guy, he was he was on a watch list. Uh, Nadal Hassan, at least, was, was known by federal authorities of having uh, links towards radicalism. So the question comes up, what do you do for people who have not had a threshold enough to be arrested but are still either radicalized or on the way to radicalization in one form or another they're either uh, surfing on websites may even have some sort of communication with folks uh, with, with bad actors overseas um, and may have even traveled sometimes traveling to, to places that are, are uh, uh, not so great areas like the older Zarnaev brother did. Um, what do you do for these folks? That's that's the biggest question. Um, you cannot monitor these folks 24 hours a day. And even if you could, the, like the Zarnaev brother, he didn't commit a crime, or at least a known crime, until he actually dropped the bomb in that in the in the Boston Marathon area. And Nadal Hassan, the Fort Hood shooter, did not commit a crime until he started opening fire. Um, at Fort Hood. So the question is, what do you do if people start to show a level of radicalization but don't cross the threshold of worthy of arrest? And that's what we, I think we have to struggle with as a, a country, as a democracy, as a, a law enforcement, intelligence entities. Um, second thing is, and I, I think, uh, you know, if you, if you watch that documentary Homegrown, um, the, the brother of Nadal Hassan gave a, a pretty good quote, and he said that his radicalism was mental illness cloaked in Islamic fundamentalism. Um, I, 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 I know it's too early to, to speculate on this, this attack here, but, um, you know, a lot of people who are radicalized, become radicalized, or show radicalized tendencies, uh, the radicalization tends to be, again, a, a, a symptom of mental illness, not the other way around, uh, particularly when you're talking about lone wolves, unorganized uh, or unorganized uh, terrorism that this seems to be an indicator of. And then the, uh, the final thing, I'll, I'll say this, and I'm going to weigh a little bit into political, into political waters here, and I... I, I should, should caveat, I, I kind of fall on one side of this, and it's the, the issue of guns and terrorism. Um, I, I get it, people fall on all sorts of the spectrum for firearms and what should be legal, um, and uh, someone who's used firearms and is very proficient with firearms, I, I tend to, to say, hey, they, they, making them legal is, is okay. I mean, Having a firearm is okay. You take risks when you have a firearm. You take risks when you own a backyard pool. Um, however, comma, I will say that the the when we talk about people who are under FBI investigation for terrorism, 
people who are on no-fly lists, um, trying to cross, ensure that they don't buy firearms is probably a worthy goal. Or I'm not going to say probably is a worthy goal. Um, and I get it. Uh, in the politics of this country, it's very hard to do restrictions on firearms. However, again, uh, we do restrictions on vehicles, on whether you can drive a car. We do restrictions on prescription drugs. We do restrict... Uh, restrictions and we have uh, registries uh, on all sorts of items uh, that are perfectly legal. Um, I, I'm willing to say that someone who uh, buys a firearm should have to undergo a check to make sure they're not on a uh, terrorism watch list of some sort or haven't been investigated by the FBI. Um, the flip side of that, which would be very controversial, would be having a gun registry. And I know that's for someone who's a gun owner, that's it's a very uh, long leap. But having a gun registry so you know if a guy pops up having an association with terrorism, that you can look back and say, oh, Rowan Sharma, he has associations with terrorism and he just bought four AR-15s in the last week. So... Um, whether we should have that or not, uh, I'll let you decide, but that would be a very effective tool in countering terrorism. So again, I'm, I'm going a little political here and I apologize if I offend people, but those are, again, some of my initial thoughts. Um, and if there's questions or issues, I'd be happy to talk it this Thursday at the Adobe Connect session.